Hello. After work today, I read a philosophical dialogue by Oscar Wilde. It's called The Decay of Lying. And it's a, a dialogue uh, with uh, two, two main, two characters. It's, uh, I wrote some notes. Uh, it's Cyril and Vivian. And it starts with Cyril asking Vivian uh, to go outside because it's a beautiful day. And Vivian immediately just starts spouting off with um, those terrific Oscar Wilde uh, paradoxical statements that you really expect um, if you read anything Oscar Wilde. One of the things I love about Oscar Wilde is that all of the characters in all of his plays and his novel uh, and in his dialogues, everyone is a mouthpiece for Oscar Wilde in the, in the best way possible. Just like watching a Quentin Tarantino movie where everyone's Quentin Tarantino. Anyway, um, so they they have a discussion about uh, art and nature and Vivian finally says that um, he or she, I'm not sure, um, has written an article in defense of lying. It's uh, the, the decay of lying, a protest. And he asserts that uh, lying has gone out of fashion and that, and that lying, n nobody lies anymore. And Cyril immediately says, like, well, what about politicians? And Vivian goes, ah, they're, they're merely just misrepresenting themselves. Because what's the point of a lie if you have to back it up with evidence and proof? And he says, a lie is simply that which is its own evidence. Um, and so... He's, he's talking about art, and um, what, what made me want to read this was uh, some thoughts that I had while I was reading uh, True History by Lucian. And what he's talking about is that um, modern novels of his time, the way he puts it, is that, that they're stringing together dull facts in the, under the guise of fiction. Whereas, um, like the, the the classical ancient stories, are these fantastic tales that are posed as if they are true. It's really interesting. Oscar Wilde has a great way of turning things upside down. Um, and it's very funny. He, uh, he goes on with a whole list of authors uh, that he takes pot shots at and he has all his funny kind of wildian statements. Um, I wrote down a few that I, that I liked. He says, uh, Henry James writes as if it's a painful duty. Uh, he says stuff about Montpassant and Zola and Daudet. Um, George Meredith he spent some time on roasting. George Meredith, as a writer, he's mastered everything but language. As a novelist, he can do everything but tell a story. As an artist, he is everything but articulate. He says the difference between Zola and Balzac, the difference between unimaginative realism and imaginative reality. Um, there's one other episode that um, <clears throat> I liked a lot. He's talking about America. But me meanwhile, his, his subject matter goes all over the place. They're just spouting off. So now he's talking about America. He says, they, they, they are vulgarizing mankind, the crude commercialization of America, its materializing spirit, its indifference to the poetic side of things, and its lack of imagination and of high, unattainable ideals are entirely due to that country having adopted 
for its national hero, a man, according to his own confession, was incapable of telling a lie. And it is not too much to say that the story of George Washington and the cherry tree has done more harm in a shorter space of time than any moral tale in the whole of literature. And Cyril, Cyril responds and says, my dear boy, uh, and Vivian says, I assure you in that case, and the amusing part of the whole thing is that the story of the cherry tree is an absolute myth. Um, just, it's so fun to read. It's, it's Oscar Wilde at, at his peak. Um, I, I sort of prefer him when he doesn't have to bother basically with a plot, when you can just hear Oscar Wilde. Um, and I think this kind of sums up, I wrote something else down, I think it sums up um, uh, the, the dialogue and almost the whole of Oscar Wilde's um, creative output. And Cyril says, <clears throat> are you prepared to prove nature is an imitation of art? And Vivian responds, my dear fellow, I am, I am prepared to prove anything. It's so great. Oscar Wilde has just so, he just bowls you over with charm. Completely wins me over every single time. He's one of the few, he might be the only writer that as I'm reading him, I feel like he's flirty with me. And I like it. Uh, I, I sort of uh, forget how much I like Oscar Wilde um, until he's right back in front of me. Um, just smiling and make you know, having all of his charm and wit and everything. Really wonderful. Um, so that's it. Uh, it's great dialogue. I love I love his other dialogues and essays. Um, uh, th well, I'll just end there. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, leave a comment if you'd like and uh, goodbye.